My goodness. I still have to get used to walking in with a theme song. Um, so this is, this is all pretty new to me. So I, I appreciate everyone for, for taking the time today. Uh, today I'll be talking a bit about Say. Um, what you'll find pretty different about my presentation is I like to keep things really, really simple. So no buzzwords, um, just exactly how me, our team, and our foundation sees things. So um, a bit about myself, uh, I spent my entire life in San Francisco, born and raised in the US, um, have a bit of a background in finance, spent some time at Goldman, started my last company with the same co-founder, and then most recently was at a, a large hedge fund in VC called KOTU. So a bit about Say. Um, Say is very simple. Say is a layer one for trading. Um, practically speaking, it's like if you took Ethereum, Solana, you optimize every single part of the layer one for just one purpose, just the exchange of digital assets, and that's it. It's fully open source, fully general purpose. The team today is a bit around 35 people, and we're spread uh, completely globally. Um, and we'll talk a bit about our thesis. Um, we only have one simple thesis. We believe that the fundamental use case of blockchains is the exchange of digital assets. That's it, period. There's so many other things uh, that people can talk about for blockchains, that people can get excited about. At the end of the day, the thing that matters the most is the exchange of digital assets. And you can see that across every big, important app in crypto today. Gaming. The largest applications have their own exchanges. It's the exchange of Axies tokens. It's the exchange of Stepin's tokens. The biggest social apps all come down to the exchange of assets. For Stepin, you have to exchange the Stepin tokens, the Stepin NFTs. For NFTs, what's the main thing that people do with NFTs? They exchange them on another exchange, except instead of Binance, instead of OKX, it's OpenSea and Magic Eden. And in DeFi, I think that's, that's very obvious. I don't need to touch on for, for that too much. So why are we making this claim? Uh, when you think about all successful applications in crypto, they by and large fall into two big buckets. The first is there directly an exchange. Very obvious. It's Uniswap, OpenSea, Blur, Axie, Magic Eden. These are directly exchanges. Axie and Stepin, they might look like games, but the core thing you do in both those games is you exchange the digital assets. You exchange the NFTs. The second big bucket of successful, widely adopted applications is indirectly trading apps. MetaMask, Tether, USDC, Aave, they're not directly trading apps, but all of their demand organically still comes from trading. Tether and USDC, stable coins, they have deep product market fit as a trading pair. They are used to swap out of one token to another token. It's the main reason why stable coins are used. MetaMask, most of the users that go on MetaMask, they end up in the same locations. Uniswap in OpenSea or MetaMask swap. So all of the demand organically comes from the exchange of assets. If you look at Ethereum, the core, core product is Uniswap, OpenSea. That's where all of the users end up. There's a lot of supporting applications, but all of them end up doing some kind of trade. This one's pretty obvious. Uh, if you look at just digital asset trading volumes over time, they go up and to the right for both sides both centralized exchanges and DEXs that are gaining a lot more, especially now that people don't maybe trust uh, every centralized exchange as much. So what does this mean? A simple way to think about L1s and the way that our team really thinks about it, the way that the SAFE Foundation thinks about it, is there's a common misconception that crypto is different. It's a brand new industry, brand new paradigm. It's the exact same as any other industry we've all known. And most industries are dominated by publishers. In gaming, those publishers are Activision, EA, 
Epic. If you and I wanted to create a brand new game, we'd go to Activision. They'd take 5% of the game revenues and they'd distribute it to all the GameStops, the, 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 the Steams, and help distribute our game. If we created a brand new drug together, we'd need to go to Pfizer. They would help distribute our drug to all the hospitals and everywhere else. In music, if we created a brand new song, you'd have to go to Warner, you'd have to go to Spotify. They will help distribute that song. The same happens in crypto. So the question is, who are the publishers? Who are the big publishers in crypto? And by and large, they fall into three big buckets. It's either a centralized exchange, an L1, or an L2. The job of being a publisher in crypto is you build your application on this layer one, and they will distribute and help you get your first set of users. Today, the biggest publisher in crypto is pretty obvious. It's the biggest exchange and the biggest layer one. It's Ethereum. Ethereum is today's greatest publisher. That's why so many users and so many apps are still around the table. It's slow. It's expensive. It doesn't matter. None of that really mattered. They have the most users. So that's why people still go back to Ethereum. So for any layer one to be successful, they need to successfully convince incredible founders and applications that building on their layer one, on this infrastructure versus that infrastructure versus Solana versus Ethereum, is somehow better and will get you more users than building on the biggest publisher today, Ethereum. That's all that matters. There's so many other things that L1s and chains will pitch. They'll pitch the speed, they'll pitch the cost. That's all helpful, but at the end of the day, what does the core founder and application care about? They care about users. They don't care about anything else. They just want users. They want to offer the best user experience. They want to keep those users and retain them. And that's exactly the easiest way to think about what Say is focused on. What's our big bet? Our bet is that the largest publisher in crypto in Web3 will be the destination for exchanging all digital assets. Because that's what this entire industry comes down to. The problem is current infrastructure holds that back. It's really unscalable. By and large, they take a one size fits all. They build a general, general purpose infrastructure and expect everyone just to come on board. And the best part is they'll actually pivot and focus the value prop on certain industries. Like Tomorrow, we're NFT-focused infrastructure. Next day, we're gaming-focused. Say we'll only ever be focused on one thing, just trading assets. That's it. Because trading assets is general purpose. Typically, a common misconception of Say is, if you're focused on the exchange of assets, you must be focused on DeFi. Well, no. It's the exchange of assets is the most general purpose thing in crypto. Gaming, NFTs, everything depends on the exchange of assets. If you talk to an NFT team, they'll talk about a lot of things that they're excited about. What they're fundamentally excited about is minting out their NFTs. They want to sell out their NFTs. They want people to trade their NFTs. That's the only thing that really, really matters to them. The second big issue, chains get very congested. When things are expensive, when things are congested, it makes it very tough for the seamless exchange of assets to happen. And then finally, they're too slow. Say is the fastest chain point blank in the industry. The latest, you can all just go online and look up SayScan and the current uh, speed of the chain. Uh, it's well under 500 milliseconds. Um, that is magnitudes faster than even Solana and some of the best chains that our team really look up, looks up to, that our technology team really takes a lot of lessons from. So that's uh, the simple way to think about Say. It's the optimal layer one infra for just the exchange of digital assets. And the big thing that we're focused on is teaching and helping people understand that no matter if you're building a game, an NFT project, a social app, DeFi, it all comes back to trading assets. 
the way you get distribution as a product, the way that you get users as an application, is you need people to find out about your digital assets. You need people to trade them. That's why exchanges are still so big. If you look at all the sponsors of this exchange, of, of this conference, they're all exchanges for a reason. That's still where most of the distribution and most of the users sit. So that brings us to the big vision. Where will Say end up in 10 years? If we're successful in solving this problem, it is the single most important problem in crypto. To be able to build an exchange, an application, and have the trading operate exactly like a centralized exchange. There's no difference, there's no trade-off. Today, the trade-off is too high. If you build a decentralized exchange today, you get all the benefits of decentralization, but the user experience is so, so bad. It is not even practically to, practical to think about. It. It's too big of a gap. Say we'll close that gap. That's the only problem that the technical team is focused on solving. And what that leads us to is the super highway of all trading activity, where any kind of digital asset, whether it's an NFT, a gaming app, uh, a DeFi token, all ends up getting traded and exchanged on Say. The apps can live elsewhere. That's pretty realistic. But all the assets get traded on just Say. That's a the end of uh, at least my time. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd love to, to chat more. And our big call to action, the thing that we are most focused on, especially in a market like right now, is I think the most underrated part of the industry are failed founders. Founders that have taken their first leap, their first jump, and it didn't work out how they expected. The market was tough, they didn't raise as much money, they made classic mistakes. We want to give them a second chance. It's something that resonates a lot with me. Uh, my first many, many companies did not do very well. And I'm excited about the trajectory of Say Labs, but I think every good founder deserves a second, a third chance. And Say wants to be the ultimate supporter when they fail for their first time. So if you know any strong founders that maybe are struggling, maybe things haven't gotten the way that they wanted during a market like this, put them in touch with our team. You can find our website and everything on all our information. But that's probably the only way and the only thing we fundamentally care about. Thank you. Jeff, would you like to open the floor, I think, for a couple of questions? We'll yeah, get a, a mic to you there. in a bit, yeah. Hello. Hi, Jeff. Uh, Hello. Great presentation. I'm Tarun from uh, Build Crypto. Uh, I do a podcast and uh, do technical talks on software. Um, so my question was, uh, you said um, the scalability aspect, right? The, um, uh, could you talk more about it? How um, um, transaction throughput, um, uh, are you uh, proof of stake based or, or meta stable kind of like av avalanche? Uh, protocol, how, how does that work? Yeah, yeah, says, says open source, fully open source, proof of stake. I'll keep things pretty, pretty quick. The big difference about how Say thinks about the technical roadmap versus most other L1s is instead of focusing on a big technical improvement, the only thing that matters is the user. It's the same YC principles of starting any product as uh, we've all sort of learned. Focus on the problem, focus on the user problem. What's the problem that users have right now? They want to trade and exchange assets more. We know the demand is there. That was like half the presentation. If we know that all the user demand sits on exchanging assets, how do we solve that problem for them? It includes a lot of technical advancements that some chains are purely focused on. It's paralyzing the EVM, adding EVM compatibility. All of that are things that are on the roadmap. You guys will probably find out about it over the next couple months, next year. Um, but it includes a lot of things to ultimately solve what is just the user problem. No technical issues, no technical problems that we're focused on, it's just the user problem, and that includes a lot, a lot of things. It's a great question. Oh, we're good? I'll catch you after. 
Ladies and gentlemen, can we give Jeff a round of applause, please? Great presentation.